Welcome to this episode of Locked In. In this episode, I'm gonna be doing part two of my first mountain bike build series, which I'm gonna make my version of the best hardtail yet soft tail <laughs> mountain bike. So if you wanna see that, please stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe and like this video if you haven't already. So in this video, I'm going over the specs of the wheel set that I had custom built that actually have been in the family for quite a while that kind of came back. The tires I'm gonna run, it's honestly because thanks to COVID, we're going to something a little different to test out that I'll be reviewing later down on this series. So let's start out with the big things, the wheel set. These are a set of custom wheels I had built a long time ago that I actually sold to Mario and he ran for a cross season we raced last year and they've come back to me because he doesn't need them anymore and I do for this build. They're not ideal for this project but I'll be getting to that in just a moment. But I think these are gonna be a great baseline and an affordable option for somebody who's doing something like me that maybe has a spare of gravel wheels that they want to put on a 29er. So let's go over the specs of these wheels. So we'll start with what's common between basically both of them, and that is going to be the rims, which are a Velocity Blunt SS wheel set. These are a great option for an XC rim, in my opinion. They've been super solid, and they've been flawless for Mario as well. So these wheels, I don't know actually how many miles we have on them, but I want to say I've had these collect, I had these built, I want to say four years ago, roughly, and maybe even longer. They also are built with the affordable DT Swiss Champion spokes. If I were to build them with some revolutions, they probably would overall drop about, I'd say collectively 50 to 100 grams off this wheel set. So next we're going on to the hubs, which are both the same brand. These are a Bitex hub. I built these around this hub set because of the options that they come with. The Bitex hubs, honestly are a great affordable option and an alternative to a DT Swiss hub. Very similar weight and build specs, but a lot more affordable. I got these from bikehubstore.com. They're by no means sponsoring this video, but I'll link them in the description below because these hubs have been pretty flawless. The great thing is with the front, you can either spec this with a quick release, a 12 mil or a 15 mil axle. So that's what I've converted here to run with the mountain bike fork. Now the unfortunate thing is because these were obviously built around a gravel spec, these are not boost. So I will be running a boost spacer kit which again, not ideal, but I don't want to spend the time and the money to relace these rims to a different boost hub. So later down the line, I'm trying to get parts for a mountain bike boost wheel set build, or if I can find another brand that wants to send over some review, review wheels for that bike, I don't want to have to deal with the spacers if I'm taking the wheel on and off a lot. But again, I can repurpose these wheels. I simply change the end caps and they'll work for now. As far as the rear wheel goes, it's obviously the same rim, the same spokes, and again, another Bitex center lock rear hub. Now this does have an option of running a standard Shimano hub body or the XD hub body that I have on it currently. And this isn't a 12 millimeter rear setup. Again, I am gonna be running a boost spacer on here so that I can put this from a 142 millimeter width to a 148 to work with my Cobalt Diablo frame set, which I do have a discount code in the description below if you wanna pick up a carbon hardtail for yourself. Now these wheels have a good spec as well. They aren't as wide as I'd like them to be because of the current trends and everything, but I think this will be a good baseline again to start this build. And the tire size I'm running isn't super crazy wide. This has a 26.6 millimeter internal width with a 30 millimeter external. And I'm gonna be pairing this with my Panracer Driver Pros, which I have reviewed on this channel and I'll link that video in the description below. These I ran in a 650B version. Panracer kindly sent me a set of these in a 29 by 2.4. The frame set that I'm running, the Cobalt Diablo, is said to run a 2.35 with plenty of mud clearance. There's not a lot of mud in California, so I got some 2.4s. Maybe I can go up a size to a 2.6 based on how much clearance is left in the frame set once I build it up with those rims as a combination. These are obviously going to be set up tubeless like the other set that I ran, and I really think this is a great kind of all-around performer for basically the cross-country and light trail riding that I'm going to be doing locally. So I'm super excited for this build. And the reason why I went with these wheels is honestly for cost and repurposing. If you have a set of stock gravel wheels, run some boost spacers if you're trying to do a mountain bike build. Ideally, all of my bikes would be non-boost. But if you know anything about mountain, they've been boost spacing for quite a while. And even some gravel bikes now are going boost spacing. So I think later on the line, that's gonna be a common thing between the two. But right now, I think with that $30 Amazon adapter kit for the boost setup on here, it's definitely the most affordable option to just convert some wheels you probably already have laying around. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I check them every single day. To make sure you don't miss out on any more of this build series, make sure to subscribe and like this video. So as you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram, links are in the description below. And lastly, you can pick up some Slow But Look Pro merchandise or support the channel on Patreon. It really does help me produce more of these videos every single week. And lastly, thanks for watching this episode of Locked In. Let's get locked in today. Like tutorials